Good evening. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church tonight. Let's all get a song book, stand and turn to page 18. Page 18. Joy to be in the Lord's house on this Wednesday night. Good to see all of you here tonight. Thankful for all the young folks that are here also. And uh, so let's pray tonight for this service. And pray that God will help us as we gather together uh, to worship. Amen. Let's thank him for his blessings. As we pray tonight, let's do continue to remember those among our church that are sick tonight. Pray that God will touch them. Pray for Brother Cohen, Brother Snooker, remember him. So let's pray for him. Amen. Pray that God will meet that need there. And again, Brother Saul's daughter is still on the ventilator in Brazil. And uh, they said yesterday he had an infection. They were giving him antibiotics and different things. And, but uh, so we just need to keep praying. Amen. God was able. And uh, thank God that his wife, she got to go home. And she's doing really well.
Sunday night, he said, well, he said, I had a lady that came to church Sunday morning, and uh, she called us Sunday evening and said she tested positive. He said, I shook her hand and was around her, and he said, I'm just afraid, of, you know, I'm afraid to spread it. And he said, I don't know what it, what it will do, so uh, we just decided that we can't pull that, you know, and it's not worth getting a bunch of folks sick.
Tell you what, anybody that can and want to kneel around the altar, if you can, if you want to come up here, let's just get around the altar as much as close as we can. Pray tonight. Pray that God will, even though we're not going to have a series of uh, meeting, uh, a few nights of meeting, I'm glad God can still work in our midst. And God can still revive us. And so let's do pray. Let's pray tonight for lost loved ones. And pray for our young people. Pray that God will use our youth program. Uh, that has got started back up, and uh, that God will help Caleb and Brooke and Spring. Man, uh, God will use them to be a help to these young people and, and the families. Amen. All right, well, let's just. Father, we pray for Brother Johnson Bell. God, that you touch him. 
Lord, we pray for those that are lost. Lord, those in our families that are lost. Those, Lord, that we witness to. And Lord, we come in contact with that are lost. And Lord, that you help us to be a witness to them and talk to them and, and tell them of Christ who is able uh, to save them. He loves them. And Lord, may we love them as well. Father, we pray tonight again for every request of prayer made known here in the church. I pray for Brother Stookham. Lord, that you touch him, dear God. As he goes next week, Lord, I pray that, Lord, everything will be well. Say for Brother Cole. Lord, that you touch Brother Cole's health and Lord. And Father, all the ones that are sick in our church, God, touch them and help them and raise them up, Lord. We pray, Father, tonight for those that have got discouraged. God, encourage their hearts. Lord, those that have grown cold, may the fire of the Holy Ghost to warm our hearts tonight. And, oh, God, may you stir us, Lord. I pray for Brother Wade is in this church, Lord, as they're going through a, a storm as well. God, touch them and help them. And, and bless and touch the sick ones. Uh, oh, God, please speak with us here tonight. Lord, we need your touch. Oh, we pray. Uh, Lord, for our young people, we ask you to bless uh, our youth, Lord, here in victory. Uh, oh, God, that you would bless them and help them. And, God, use them. God, touch their hearts. And, oh, God, may they learn of thee. And, Lord, have a desire to serve you. Uh, oh, God, even while they're young, Lord, uh, as the Bible says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, for those that are helping and leading. Uh, Lord, and pray for Caleb and the spring and brook. Uh, Lord, I ask you to bless them, Lord. Touch them and use them. Uh, God, bless here tonight everything that's said and done. Uh, Lord, may you be glorified and magnified. God, we'll give you the praise. We'll give you honor. We'll give you glory. Bless our school, Lord. Thank you, God, for helping us. Lord, I pray that you bless us. Lord, touch our staff. God, keep them well. And touch our students and their families, Lord. Please, Lord, keep them well. Have your way, Lord. Save souls. Serve the saints of God. Oh, God, be with us. We need a move of the Holy Ghost in our midst. Oh, God, may you stir us tonight. Help us, God. We'll thank you, Lord, for everything that's done. Will we give you praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. Give us. Give us. Give us. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. All right, let's get a book stand and turn to page 299. Page 299. Appreciate that tonight. Appreciate y'all being here. 
Thank the Lord. Hope you've had a good week thus far. I know uh, I guess most everybody was off Monday, wasn't it? Was everybody off Monday? Wasn't that a blessing? Amen. Uh, I know yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we had one of the one of our students, he was out all last week for the first week of school. He didn't come. He was out of town. And so then we were out Monday, and so his first day of the year was yesterday. And uh, Debbie told me that he hadn't been here 30 minutes. He said, I hate school. I don't want to be here. And I'm like, dude, you're in trouble. You're just getting started, amen. But uh, that's probably the way most of everybody felt yesterday morning when you went back to work, wasn't it? I don't want to be here. <laughs> Amen. But uh, thank the Lord, amen, for all of his blessings in our lives and uh, being so good to us. And, uh, of course, this coming weekend on the 11th is be the 20-year anniversary of 9-11. That's hard to believe it's been that long, isn't it? And uh, I'll tell you, our country... I don't know what it's going to take. Uh, when all that took place 20 years ago, it kind of moved everybody toward the Lord. And it's sad that it takes a tragic situation to move people, uh, to get them to the Lord. Amen. But uh, I, I won't ever forget it. And, uh, we don't never need to forget it. Amen. What happened. And, and it's sad what we are seeing and how our country is going today. Uh, it breaks my heart. Uh, it really does. Uh, so we need to pray for our country, amen, uh, that God will help us. He's our only hope. He's our only hope. If you have your Bible tonight for a few minutes, let's turn to Matthew chapter number 10. Uh, Matthew chapter number 10. And I want to read just a few verses here tonight. Matthew chapter number 10, and I want to begin in verse number 5. Matthew 10, verse number 5. The Bible says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful tonight for the privilege and the opportunity Lord, to open the Word of God and to read from the blessed words of the Lord. And Father, I pray that you'd help us tonight for just a little while. God, as we study these verses, that God, you would speak to our hearts and help us in our lives. God, we need you tonight, and I pray that, God, you would help us. And Lord, that your will would be done, Lord, through the remainder of the service. Thank you for everyone, Lord, here tonight. Thank you for the young people that are here tonight. Thank you, God, for every blessing that you have put in our lives, Lord, today. God, no telling how many times, God, you've watched over us this day and kept us from harm, and we just say thank you. Lord, bless your name tonight. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach tonight uh, for just a few minutes from these verses on this thought, commissioned to serve. Commissioned to serve. I want to uh, start a series uh, focusing on Jesus sending the 12 out to labor in the ministry. Now, up until this point here, we find that Jesus had ministered alone. Uh, the disciples were with him. They saw uh, everything that he has done. The crowds were always normally around, but these were all observers or recipients of the ministry of Jesus. Now the time has come for the disciples to engage in the ministry themselves. And I believe in order to fully appreciate chapter 10, we need to look back at the conclusion of chapter number 9. Look at it, if you will, and uh, verse number 36. The Bible says, But when he, talking about Jesus, saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Likely the disciples were unaware that the Lord would use them as an answer to their prayers. And so after instructing them to pray uh, that laborers would be sent forth into the harvest, Jesus now commissions uh, uh, the twelve for service. Amen. And we notice that the Bible said there in verse number five, these twelve Jesus sent forth. And so he begins to commission them, sending them forth. Now, I know that this passage is, uh, has, uh, it's not really speaking about worldwide evangelism at this particular time. we got to remember this is pre-Calvary. And this is when Jesus had come into his own. And of course, we know that his own would reject him and he would later turn to the Gentiles because of their rejection. But yet we can learn a principle from what Jesus is doing and how he's instructing his disciples. He tells them to go to the lost house of Israel, to go to the Jews, not to go to the Samaritans, not to go to the Gentiles, but we know that, thank God, later they, he turned to the Gentiles. Amen. And uh, I'm glad it included the whole world. But at this particular moment, he is dealing with the lost house of Israel. And tonight we can learn the principle from what Jesus is doing in the lives of these 12 that he is sending forth. And tonight all of us who are saved, every born-again believer, is expected to labor in the harvest. None of us who are saved are exempt from service. Amen. I mean, all of us who are saved are, are to serve God. We're to allow the Lord to use our lives in whichever way he chooses to do that. And as we endeavor to reach the lost, we need to understand and apply the same principles that Jesus did to the disciples if we're going to be effective in reaching people that need the Lord. And so I, I trust tonight that God will help us just for a, a few minutes. First of all, I want you to notice there's a mandate to pursue. Verses 5 and 6, having called the disciples unto himself and empowering them for the ministry, Jesus gave a mandate for them to engage themselves in the ministry. In other words, they were to start doing something. Amen. They had watched him and they had followed him. Matter of fact, they are called disciples, but Jesus, he had discipled them. He had taught them. He had, and, and we get the term disciple, and a disciple is a learner. A disciple is a follower. 
And that's what they were doing. They were learning from Jesus. They were following Jesus. And, and as they watched what Jesus was doing, they learned what they needed to do. And so you and I tonight, we learn what we should do as Jesus now uh, sends forth the twelve that they would engage in the service of the Lord. First of all, we see the commission. These twelve Jesus sent forth. Now these men, as I said, they had traveled with Jesus. Uh, they had witnessed the miracles that Jesus had performed. They had heard the messages that Jesus had preached. They had observed that Jesus himself engaged in the ministry on a daily basis. And now the Lord is commissioning them and sending them forth to serve him. Amen. The Lord has been discipling these men, preparing them to engage in the ministry themselves. And so now the time has come for them to go out on their own and do something for the Lord. Amen. And you and I tonight, we know that the church was given uh, the great commission just prior uh, to Jesus ascending back to heaven. Amen. And we have received a mandate. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That means every one of us are to be involved in reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're to be, be engaged in reaching people in Henderson, North Carolina. We're to be engaged in reaching people in Vance County. We're to be engaged in reaching people in North Carolina. We're to be engaged in reaching people with the gospel in the United States. Hey, and then we're to be engaged in reaching people all over the world, amen, by working together and getting busy in the work of God. Now, he is mandated. This is a commission. This is a command. It is not a choice. It is a command. We don't even have to pray about it. It's a command. Amen. And so the church was given this great commission. We have received this mandate. And if we're going to be obedient to the Lord, we must engage ourselves in the ministry. I was blessed the other day when I came in, I was leaving the church the other day, and I noticed two slots in the track rack were empty. I thought, praise God. Somebody's got engaged in the ministry. Somebody got those tracks. Hopefully they didn't take them home and put them in a drawer, but thank God they were giving them out. They're going to use them. Amen. Hey, that's what those tracks are for. They're to use. Take them. Hey, you can use them. You don't even, if you say, I have a hard time talking. Well, most of all, those of you here tonight, that would be an argument that I would not really believe. <laughs> For the most of you that I know, the gift of gab, yeah, you got it pretty good. So I don't think, <laughs> but if there's some people you can't get to and, and you don't have the, the time to really sit down with somebody, that track right there, if they put it in their pocket and they get it home, it will be there. Amen. And then all you need to do is just pray that God will touch their heart, that they'll read it. Hey, can I say tonight that the reading of the word is just as powerful as the preaching of the word? Hey, that word is powerful, whether it's preached or read. Amen. And so I'm glad the word of God is what changes their lives. And so we've got to engage ourselves in the ministry, sharing the gospel. It's not just reserved for the pastor. It's not just reserved for the leadership of the church. Hey, the sharing of the gospel is for all of us who were saved. Amen. So I say, yeah, but you get paid to do it. No, I don't. I don't get paid to go out and witness. Amen. I get paid to come in here and preach to y'all. But no, I mean, but we're all involved. We're all doing what we're needing to be doing. That's what we're trying to see is we've got to be engaged, amen? And if you're saved, amen, by the grace of God and you're part of the body of Christ, you have been called and been engaging yourself in the ministry of reaching others with the gospel, amen? And so we can see it's a mandate to pursue. We can see the commission. Notice the instruction in verse 5. He sent these uh, 12 forth, 
And he commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter you not. Now, again, he was very specific uh, in what he expected these disciples to do as they engaged themselves uh, uh, in the ministry. Amen. At this time, they were not to go to the Gentiles. They were not to go uh, to uh, the Samaritans, but they were to go uh, uh, to the Jewish people. Amen. Now, of course, there's a lot of people get confused when they read these verses, but you've got to take it in its context. You've got to look at it in its, uh, in its context. If you take it out, you can get messed up, but we see it in its context. Amen. Now, we know that eventually the gospel went to all the world. The gospel was given to the Jew, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. And so we know that later on it became a, a worldwide gospel. But at this particular time, the ministry was just getting going. And he was commissioning them and he gave them specific instructions. Amen. Uh, in reaching uh, those people. Then there was the destination. He says in verse number 6, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And again, at this particular moment, the disciples were called to minister to the lost sheep of Israel. The Lord wanted to focus upon the Jews. And as we read further in the New Testament, the Lord would later call the Apostle Paul, and he would minister mainly to the Gentile world. Amen. Hey, the Lord calls, and he equips people for specific purposes. Amen. I mean, he does that, and he puts people in specific areas of ministry. And this is a principle that we must understand. This is what God is choosing to do. Hey, I'll guarantee you what I have been doing in my life for the last 40-some years has not been my choice, but it was God's choice. Amen? I couldn't tell you the times, uh, Brother Chris, that I thought about just filling out an application, get me an eight to five job where I could go at the end at eight, leave at five, and leave it alone. Wouldn't have to be bothered with it till eight o'clock next morning. But God wouldn't let me do nothing like that. Amen. That wasn't my, my calling. And God has a specific uh, purpose and specific areas, and He equips people uh, for specific ministry. Amen. And that doesn't mean that one takes a priority over the other, but we're all working together for the same goal, reaching people for Christ. Amen? And so he talks about the mandate, a mandate to pursue. But number two, notice a message to proclaim. Look at verse number seven. He said, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He instructed the disciples when he sent them out to proclaim the message that the kingdom and the message of the kingdom and that the kingdom was at hand was to be their message. Notice the priority in verse number 7. He instructed the disciples to preach as they engaged, dealing with people. And this has the idea of a herald or a public crier it means to proclaim. It means to publish. Amen. And, and we see that Jesus didn't instruct them to merely go to live a godly lifestyle. Amen. He didn't say go carry a sign. Don't just go live your life where people can see me in you. He said you've got to talk to them. Now I believe living a, a right life is important. But it's not enough. There's got to be some witnessing. There's got to be some communication, amen, uh, in, in between uh, people. Somebody's got to tell them what has happened in your life, amen. And somebody's got to tell them for the reason why you live a, a godly life, because of what Christ has done in you, amen. We must be willing to proclaim the gospel to those who have yet to hear. Hey, there are people that watch us every day, but they haven't really heard the gospel. They don't really know the gospel. It would probably shock us in a lot of churches that have never really heard a, a real plain presentation of the gospel of Christ. A lot of churches don't preach about the blood no more. They don't talk about it. They don't talk about hell no more. 
Amen. And so they really don't know. They haven't heard. A lot of churches are just going through the motions of being a church. Oh, listen. I mean, we've got to just be honest with them and talk to them and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. They may observe your life. And they notice that you're different, but we need to take the time that is necessary and to explain what has made such a radical change in your life. It was because of a man by the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Bible did say, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We cannot expect people to be saved from their sin if the gospel is not presented to them. Some people may not know that they need to be saved until somebody tells them that they're lost. Amen? And so we can see this is what Jesus is saying to the disciples. There's the priority. Notice the reality. He said, and as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Preach the reality of it. And as the disciples went, they were expected to preach that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. He gave them a specific message. Amen. He gave them a specific message to deliver to a specific people. They were to proclaim that Christ had come, that Christ and his provision for mankind was to be the emphasis of everything they were saying and preaching. Jesus wanted those disciples to let people know that he had come and he uh, was there to meet their need in their lives. Amen. You know, the, that principle seems to be lost in a lot of places. Uh, we, we, and I know that people are hurting. I know the world. I know the world's in trouble. People are in trouble. I, I know people are hurting. But I'm going to tell you tonight, our first priority is not food and clothing. Y'all just being quiet because you're being quieter because of what I said. Because it's what I said, I'm going to say it again. Our first priority is not food and clothing. I believe we're to help people with food and clothing. But that's not our first priority as a church. It is to preach the gospel to a world that is lost. Amen. That is our first priority. They need to hear about Jesus and his provision for their sin. They need to know that he and he alone has the atonement for their sin. Amen. And if we fail to proclaim the gospel, we have failed at what Christ has commanded us to do as a church. I believe we ought to help people. We, I know that there's humanitarian needs all around. And people, and thank God for people that do help and things that are going on. Amen. But hey, that's not our first priority. They need to get saved. Amen. You can feed them and you can clothe them if they die and go to hell. What good have we done? We've only helped their temporary situation. Go preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then there's the urgency. He said, it's at hand. It's right now. It's something needs to be done now. Amen. As you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He instructed the disciples to proclaim that it was at hand at this moment. He had come and, and he was in their midst. It was time now to receive him for who he is and for what he can do in their life. Hey, the deed was now. It's not later. It's now. It's not later that this world needs Jesus. It's now. It's not later that your family needs Jesus. It's now. Amen. It's you and I tonight that we are to be involved in the ministry of reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ and if we fail to do it we've not done what God wanted us to do and there, we must see the urgency of it hey how many of you believe the Lord's coming I believe he's coming don't you I believe he's coming soon shouldn't that promote the urgency of the hour of trying to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ amen the Lord is coming and we know that if the Lord don't come, we know that death is coming. Oh, how we have seen that reality 
all too often in our world. Amen? Those who reject the gospel or fail to respond will not be allowed entrance into that wonderful place called heaven. Amen. They've got to hear the gospel. They must repent and they must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if they're going to be saved. And so tonight we must see this great commission that's been given. These disciples were commissioned to serve. There was a mandate to pursue. There's a message to proclaim. And then thirdly, there's a ministry to perform. Look what he tells them to do in verse 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Now, you and I tonight, I, I don't have the power to raise the dead. I wish I did. Amen. I wouldn't have to preach as many funerals if I had, to raise, had the power to raise the dead. I mean, if I had the power to heal the sick, we wouldn't have to worry about COVID. You got sick, call me. I'll just come over and we'll take care of it. But I don't have that power. Can I just go ahead and let you in on a little secret? They don't nobody alive today have that power. I don't care what you call them, what they call themselves, but nobody alive today has that power within themselves. In that day, Jesus gave them the power to be able to do that. And the reason being was because all of this was brand spanking new to people that were hearing about Jesus and, and they were proving their message by the miracles that were being performed. Today, you and I don't have to prove our message. The proof is in the lives that are being changed. Amen. Amen. But notice when he sends them forth, he tells them about the healing. He says that you're the heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and even raise the dead. They had the ability to heal others in the name of Jesus. Again, we do not have that ability. We, we lack that ability to do that in people's lives. But I'm glad that we have a message that can change people's lives. Amen. That we do have a message that has power, that can change people's lives. If they will only believe it, thank God. We must be willing to share the gospel so that others can experience that spiritual healing in Jesus Christ. Not only we, he talks about the healing, but he also talked about the hope. Here the disciples also had the ability to cast out devils. I had a man ask me one day, he said, do you do exorcism? Uh, afraid not, buddy. Hey, Amen. I don't want to mess with none of them devils. I don't have the power to cast out devils. I don't have that ability, amen, to cast out devils. But the disciples, as he sent them forth, he empowered them and gave them supernatural powers to do such things and such healing as casting out uh, devils along with the power to heal these, this healing of the de deliverance from bondage it brought hope to people's lives and can I say tonight that thank God the gospel will bring hope to people's lives I'm glad the gospel will deliver you from the bondage of the devil Amen. Though we don't have the power, the gospel has the power. The Lord has the power to change lives. Amen. The church tonight, we have the message that the world needs to hear and the world needs to embrace. And if they will do that, it will change their life forever. Then he talks about the humility. He said, freely you have received, freely give. You see, these men... Jesus expected these men to serve all that they encountered regardless of who they were and do it with love and humility. Recognizing their great need and sharing what they had received from Christ. They realized how undeserving they were, but yet what Christ had done for them in their life. And he wanted them to freely share 
what he had done and given to them. Tonight, I'm glad you and I have got a message that is free. Amen. I mean, we don't, I mean it's, it's free. Thank God. And this, I believe, is something that needs to be uh, brought uh, out today. There's a lot of people that have developed their sense of arrogance and self-righteousness. And, and sometimes we, we tend to look down on people that are in sin and, and the way they live their lives. If they don't look like us and they don't act like us, and we tend to look down on them. But hey, you need to remember where you was when God found you. And some of you was in the gutter. Some of you may not have been. But thank God, aren't you glad somebody came to where you was, amen, and told you about Jesus, regardless of what you looked like, how you acted, the lifestyle that you lived, and told you about Christ. That's what we're to do tonight. God help us. I often wonder, what, what, how will we act if somebody walked into our church and when they walked in and spoke, we spelled alcohol on their breath. See what we want to do. Pray that God will deal with that problem. Amen. I, I bury, they come stumbling drunk in here and, and causing a ruckus. That, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody that just that don't act like us, that don't dress like us, that don't look like us. Amen. Maybe they got their whole face is just one big piercing. It may be looking kind of rough. To me, that's somebody that needs Jesus. Somebody comes in, got tattoos all over. Hey, that's somebody that may need Jesus. Amen. Hey, we got to love them. Go freely. You have received. Freely give. And because if it had not been for the grace of God, that could be you or I. Amen. And so we got to love folks just as they are. That song that we sing for invitation sometimes, just as I am. God wants us to come just as we are. And when people come to church, if they're lost, and, and you, you invite somebody that's lost, hey, if they're lost, just expect them to look like they're lost and act like they're lost until they get saved. Amen? They're not going to act like us. Not until they get right with God. And so what we got to do is just love them. Amen? We cannot look down our, our noses in arrogance and self-righteousness at people that are bound by sin, but we must reach out to them and tell them, thank God, there's a remedy, and his name is Jesus. And tonight, I trust that God will help us for us to realize how involved we need to be. I need to be involved in reaching people with the gospel. I need to be involved. I mean, it's not hard if you come up on a stranger and, and you may not have time to sit and talk for 15 minutes. But if you've got a track in your pocket, you can say, hey, I'd like to give you this and let you know that Jesus loves you and I'm praying for you. I mean, that may be all it takes. Over the years, we've got back a few tracks where people have mailed back and said, I read this track and I gave my heart to Jesus. Amen. I mean, and Facebook and, and our radio ministry, all that we can do, just getting the gospel out because we want to see people saved. But we've got to be involved, amen? We can't just depend on the radio. We can't depend on Facebook. We can't depend on social media. Sometimes it's going to have to be a one-on-one. -on -one. How many of you got saved? Somebody witnessing to you and inviting you to church one-on-one? -on -one? A lot of folks. That's the way God got a hold of my heart. They came witness to me, told us about Jesus. Next thing you know, the Holy Ghost got a hold of us. Amen. That's, I'm afraid, what's missing in our, our day today is that one-on-one -on -one contact and witnessing and praying and then allowing the Holy Ghost to get a hold of somebody's heart. Amen. And if the Holy Ghost gets on them, look out. They're going to make a move one way or the other. They're going to come to Jesus or they're going to get away from you. Amen. But tonight, let's just get involved in the work of the Lord. These 12, Jesus sent forth. Tonight, you and I, we just need to surrender, let the Lord work in our lives to reach other people, amen, with the gospel. Father, thank you tonight. Lord, we, we know that this has kind of been a simple message tonight, but Lord, how simple it is that, Lord, you saved us. 
Lord, somebody dealt with us. Somebody prayed for us. Somebody witnessed to us. Somebody invited us to the house of God. And Lord, because of that witness, because somebody prayed, God, we're here tonight saved by the grace of God. Lord, there are many, many people, just like all of us in this building tonight that are out there in the world, Lord, that just need somebody to show some kindness and love and just tell them a little bit about Jesus. Show that they care. They're concerned. Lord, I know not everybody's going to accept it, but God, it's not our responsibility who accepts it and who don't. It's just our responsibility to tell. And God, you will do the rest. Father, have you will your way in our lives. Make us servants, Lord, for thee. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. While we stand, our heads are bowed this evening. Oh, that God would show us our life and how we need to be involved in reaching others. There's a whole world out there tonight lost. People on the job lost. Neighbors that are lost. People every day we meet. People are lost. They just need somebody to witness to them. Will that somebody be me? And will that somebody be you? Father, I thank you again for the privilege to be here tonight. Thank you, Father, for everyone in this building. Thank you, Lord, for all the young people that are here as well tonight. I pray, God, that you bless all of us and help us all, God, in these days to love you. God, I know that if we love you, Lord, we will serve you. Help us, I pray, to reach others with the gospel. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen.